Prophesy to him. What an awesome presence you are, Lord. Amazing, glorious, amazing presence of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, I do it like you know he's here this morning. The presence of the Lord is here. Oh, oh I feel his presence, warm presence in this place today. Oh, and you know the Holy Spirit loves when you sing to Him. Oh, he Wrap your loving Let your love surround me. How many want his love? Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Man ought to praise him. Man ought to give him glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Come on, tell him how much you love him. Come on, tell him how much you adore him. I can't hear some of you. Some of you are too quiet. Come on. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. We sanctify this place in our bodies with the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the power of God. We thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke. We thank you for your second coming. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the power of the living God. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, glory, glory. Let your love surround me. God, feel like worshiping here. Come on, would you give him a few moments of worship? Hallelujah. I give you the highest praise, highest praise. Oh, I love you, Lord. Spirit, Holy Spirit, I just love you. I just adore you. I magnify you. I lift you up. I glorify you. I just 
all the oppressed. You are a great God. You are a mighty God. You are magnificent. You are my healer. When I was sick, you delivered me. You touched my mind. You healed my body. You strengthened my soul. You are my kinsman redeemer. You are my soul coming king. And I am dedicated to lifting up your holy name. For now and forever, I will declare your matchless mighty name, Lord Jesus Christ. There is none like you, never will be, and never will be to come. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures forever. You have destroyed all the plans of the enemy. You crushed him under your feet. You reign forever. Hallelujah. <laughs> you reign forever, Lord Jesus. God of might, God of power, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mighty God. Oh, I'm not praising your holy name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Oh, worship the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Shout worthy. Shall worthy, worthy to be praised. Oh my God! If we don't praise Him, the rocks will cry out. If we don't bless Him, the rocks will cry out. Hallelujah! Mighty God, clap your hands unto the Lord. Oh, I'm going to give you just a few more minutes to tell him everything you need to tell him. Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. I tell the world that Jesus, you're my lover. The lover of my soul. My kingsman redeemer. My sanctifier. My soul redeemer. My deliverer. My savior. My Lord. Oh, my joy. My peace. My comfort. My all and all. Somebody ought to tell him something. My everything. My everything. My all and all. My lamb, my lion, my protector, my keeper. Well, oh, my joy, my hope, my peace, my way maker, my hallelujah. My hope, my joy, the hope of my salvation. Oh my God. Thank you for the blood that heals, delivered, and saved me. I was a sinner lost on my way to hell. But the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The powerful cross saved me. Saved me. Delivered me. Washed me. Made me. And I am who I am today. Because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the cross. Because of the Holy Spirit. Because of the word of God. I am nothing without the Lord Jesus. Christ. He saved me from redemptive, from, 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 from eternal hell and damnation. Jesus saved me. When others forsake me, he loved me. When others rejected me, he received me. When others abandoned me, he was there. Stick it closer than a brother. He is a friend. My friend, Jesus Christ, the creator of all the universe, but yet he had time to be my friend. Oh, my hope and my love and my joy. That's why I serve him. That's why I tell the world that Jesus is Lord and King. He is my personal Savior. Is that your testimony? Wave to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is powerful. My sweet Holy Spirit. My sweet Holy Spirit. Would you acknowledge the Holy Spirit's presence in this place this morning? Spirit of the living God, we acknowledge all of who you are in your power and in your glory. We acknowledge who you are in your greatness and in your splendor. We acknowledge you, Holy Spirit.
holy name. Seem like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Do I have any worshipers this morning? Oh, we love you, Lord. I declare the power of the Lord is here today to heal, to deliver, to set free. I declare the kingdom of God is here in power and in demonstration. I declare the kingdom of God where Jesus is Lord and King rules and reigns in this place today. And I declare that I'm under the unction and the authority of the kingdom of heaven I stand in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ wherein he has authorized me as his son as his apostle as his servant as his friend as his brother to take his message of love to the world and so I come under the unction of the power of the name of Jesus to declare a word to his people around the world and for this, we don't stop to give the Lord glory, honor, and praise. Blow kisses to Him. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you. I give you my heart today. I give you my love and my affection today, Lord Jesus. I give you my sweet love. I give you my devotion. I give you my heart. I give you my glory. I lay down my crown at your feet. All that I am, I laid at the foot of Jesus Christ. I am your servant. I am your footstool. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Can you humble yourself before him today? I'm your footstool, Lord Jesus. You are the porter and I'm the clay. Mold me and make me into what you want today in the name of Jesus. right into this teaching this morning we have a way to go let's get into the word of god this morning greetings to all of you in the mighty and the powerful name of jesus all of you in your respective places god bless you we are moving into this 2020 with power and authority say power and authority power. amen shalem and i greet you all of you carry amen Dell and our invited guests all of you god's people listening and watching hallelujah your prophet malik god bless you and all of the saints of God, wherever you are, listening and watching. Lewis, God bless you. Shanique, blessings to you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Ramesh, hallelujah. Kumar, hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you a few minutes. I don't wait on sharing. You can share if you want quickly because we're going to jump right into the word of God. This morning, I want to deal with the ministry of the kingdom of God by Jesus Christ. The ministry of the kingdom of God by Jesus Christ. Again, I am going to uh, bring a key scriptural verse into light. And today I've decided to sit and teach this. Because the kingdom of God is the rulership of Jesus Christ in the nations. Yeah? And the kingdom of God is... Uh, a very powerful message. It took me all these years to come into the truth of the kingdom. And I'm still Amen. studying the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? What does that mean? That means that uh, uh, I, I'm going to tell you some things today that's going to be very surprising. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
Let's turn to a few scriptural verses. Let's go to the first one. Matthew chapter 24. This has become literally my theme for 2020 and beyond. This is my personal agenda from the Lord. This is my personal scripture from the Lord. And I'm using this. This is what I'm going to preach from now until Jesus Christ returns. Matthew 24, if you have it, let's back up the verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. Verse 3, and as he sat upon the mount of what? Olives. Y'all with me? The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. Hallelujah. How many want to know? When it's the sign of the coming of the Lord. Anybody in here today? Yes. Mm. You know, that is the response you will hear in most churches. All around the world, I found that the anticipation for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ has dropped. People are so concerned about social media. People are so concerned about living in this life. They are not talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know pastors and ministers and believers who don't even talk about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know in the old in the New Testament church they, they talked about the coming of Jesus like it was tomorrow? Could it be that because they had a mindset, the early church, that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was near, that's what kept them saved? I want to suggest to you if you were to prepare like Jesus is coming today or tomorrow and talk about it with that amount of excitement, you would live a victorious life. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. But I found that there is a lack of anticipation for the coming of the Lord. And it's because people are either deeply involved in sin that they're not interested and when you talk about the coming of the Lord, even the church look at you with a funny eye. Why? They're not anticipating the coming of the Lord. Now, I don't know what is being taught. In many places, I really don't stop to try and figure out what other people are teaching. But it brings great concern when I do hear the lack of intensity of the message of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if you believe the Lord, see, the devil doesn't want people to know how close the coming of Jesus is. Why? Because if he could make you think the coming of the Lord Jesus is 10, 20, 30 years from now, and not possibly today or tomorrow, then he will keep you in sin. You will stay in your sin. You will keep doing the things you're doing. But the minute I remember... Every day I remind myself of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every day I'm looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ with great excitement. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his disciples in Matthew chapter 4 and, and, and um, 3 were looking for that also. Are you looking for the coming of the Lord? Yeah. Are you, everybody? Yes. You expect him? Do you want him to come today? Yes. Hmm? Yes. That's the question. Amen. Amen. Most people, I ever tell you, it's a struggle yes. for most people. Mm -hmm. Because people, uh uh. Mm -hmm. See, the devil has even sent false prophets. You know that? And you know what the false prophets do? Tell you you're going to get a house. So, guess what? If you're expecting to get this house, you're not looking for Jesus to come. Because you expect what that prophet say to come to pass. Knowing that the devil can be setting you right up. You know why? Because that word might not come to pass. I'm here to tell some of you, some of the prophetic words that came on your life, God is not going to hold up his second coming until you get your husband, until you get your wife, until you get your car, until you get that big global ministry. You think Jesus is going to hold up his coming? Because some word you got? Uh -uh. Jesus himself has his own ministry. Do you know that? I'm going to show you Jesus has his own ministry. And he wants that ministry to be fulfilled. What is that? 
getting the kingdom of God around the world. Here is it right now. Verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, Matthew 24 and 4, that Take heed that no man deceive you. Say deceive. deceive. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Deception is at its out almost the highest we've ever seen it. Deception, and it's two parts, you know, I'm not going to blame all the pastors. Let me start with the people of God. There is more deception among the people of God than ever before in life I've ever seen it. People who say they're Christians don't live a Christian lifestyle. That's deception. Why? You're deceiving yourself and others. You ain't fooling nobody. You saying you're Christian, Christian, the devil know you ain't saved. People around know you ain't saved. Your sweetheart know you ain't saved. Your lover know you ain't saved. Your, your, your neighbor know you ain't saved. The people at your job know you ain't saved. Who you fooling? Then you go to church and think people deceive and think, well, come on, praise God. Who you fooling? Everyone and see and know your story all around town. Deceive it for many shall come in my name saying I'm Christ and shall deceive many. Many going to say I am saved. Many come in and say I got a gift. I'm a prophet. I'm an apostle. I have a healing ministry. Many come in in the name of Jesus. People. Many people are coming in the name of Jesus and don't know Jesus if he's standing in front of them. People. Let me deal with the people first. You know how I know how you could judge? Well, um, I, um, 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 you should know them by their fruit. Show me the fruit the person produces in their life. If the person can't keep their body pure, they, you, that's the fruit of unrest. That's the fruit of the flesh. That ain't the fruit of the spirit. He said, you should know them by their what? Fruit. fruit. So if I go and look at your life and I see the fruit of your life, it's the flesh, adultery, immorality, fornication, lie. What's the works of the flesh? Rivalry. Anger. That's the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, temperance, meekness, goodness, mm -hmm. kindness, self-control, mm -hmm. temperance. You don't exhibit that in your personal life. You are in the fruit of deception. You deceive yourself, but that's all right. You in the, under this message to repent today and truly come to the Lord before it's too late. Yes. Come to the Lord before it's too late. Yes. Come to the Lord before it's too late. Do not, no, 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 no. I find that too many people are deceiving themselves. There are people who are on Facebook, doing Facebook Live, and I know they ain't safe. Come on, man. No, no. Get, get, get yourself right. Then there's the next level. People who profess to be apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers. We saw it in Revelation 2. And what was it, Carrie? Let me show you. We're talking about today the kingdom of God and how to get this. This What is Jesus' ministry in the kingdom? Uh-huh. Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. I know thy works. This is Jesus talking. Now, who's talking? Jesus. Who's talking? Jesus. In the book of what? Revelation. This book is called the Revelation of the Apostles. Sorry, the Revelation of the, uh, I'm sorry, of Jesus Christ. That's the name of the book. We shorten and call it Revelation. That's wrong. This book is called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. So Jesus, this whole book is about Jesus. Say Jesus. 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 And Jesus is Lord. Amen. He is God. Amen. He is God in the flesh. Yes. Now, we had a discussion, my wife and I, this morning. Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. So how long did Jesus exist? From before the foundation of the world. So when he came in Mary, he didn't just exist. When he walked on the earth, he didn't just exist. In fact, when he died uh, and he was about to die, he said, Father, glorify me. What? With the glory that I had from the beginning of the what? World. Y'all read your Bible, tell me. He said, Father, glorify thou me with the glory which I had from the beginning of the world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
And the word became flesh. Who was that word that became flesh and dwelt among men? Jesus. Jesus. So he was in the what? Beginning. In the beginning was the what? Word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So Jesus is who? God. So you don't let no false teaching tell you Jesus ain't God. That's the basic principle in the kingdom of God. If you don't know that Jesus Christ is God, manifested in the flesh when he walked the earth, and glorified, remember when he rose from the dead, he showed himself to his disciples. And what did he have? The hand and his feet. He had the hand print. He told what? The disciples, all them what? Put your hand in my what? Hand. Put your hand in my side. Feel the male, nail print. So his glorified body is forever with those nail prints in his hand and in his feet. So if he was slain before the foundation of the world, it brings me to think that that body was the body he took on from before the foundation of the world. Amen. Now, I don't need to understand all that. All I go on in this is the word of God. So Jesus, number one, is the king of the kingdom of God. I hear a lot of people teaching on the kingdom, you know. I've been teaching the kingdom over 20 years, studying it over 25 years. Taught it around the world and still doing it. And I've heard so many versions of the kingdom of God. You cannot talk about the kingdom of God without discussing Jesus Christ as king. I heard somebody posting on their page. Uh, they made a comment on social media. Jesus never taught about the kingdom or something. Never preached himself. He didn't have to preach himself. He's the Messiah. He told them, come unto me. What you mean he didn't tell them? He said, come unto me, all you that are laden and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. When they asked him, are you the king? He said, yes, and for this reason I came. Amen. Yes. I can show you that. This is my blood, which was shed for the redemption of sin, for the remission of sins of the world. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood, which was shed for the remission of sin. Yes. I am the door. I am the gate. I am the way. Anyone that comes unto me, I will no wise cast out. I am the door to eternal life. Anyone that comes any other way is a thief and a liar. Read your Bible, people of God. Don't be deceived in this last hour. Because people are taking a good message as good as the kingdom messenger is. And they're leaving Jesus out. If you leave Jesus out, there's no kingdom in that. Kingdom is, you can't get the benefits of no longer person. He's the embodiment of the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ. If you don't know who he is, don't expect no blessing. See, a lot of people want blessing from the kingdom without relationship with the king. A lot of people want favor from the kingdom without knowing the king. A lot of people want protection from the kingdom of God without relationship with the king, Lord Jesus. People want to do their own thing and violate the laws of the kingdom of God and expect Jesus to show them favor. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> oh, I what I ought to be. No one is perfect. No, man, come on, you keep talking like that. God ain't moved by that, you know. God is not moved by your crying and your shouting. No, he want to know. My sheep hear my voice and will answer unto, not unto another. He want to know if you're following me. Him. He wants to know if you're obeying his word. So Jesus in Revelation 2 and 20, two, Revelation chapter 2 verse 2 says what? I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot spare them which are evil. So Jesus is talking to the leader of the church of Ephesus. I know your works. See, God knows your works. Shout hallelujah. God knows every work you and I do for him. If you're in the kingdom of God and you're not doing any works for the Lord, man, yeah, 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 come on. God have every record of every work. Oh, I ain't doing nothing for the church. I ain't doing nothing for the house of God. Well, that's fine on you. He keeping record of every work you and I do. And there's a payday. If man can pay you, what you think about God? If you work and expect a salary at the end of the week or the end of every two weeks or the end of every month, however, you get paid, you think God is unrighteous to forget your labor of love and how you do labor for him? 
I am expecting a reward. Every day, shall reward. Say, Lord, reward me. Then work for him. Your labor of love. And how thou cannot bear them which are evil. Say, bear them that are evil. Jesus is saying to the church of Ephesus, you know what? I am too upset with all of these weak, 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 non-kingdom Christians. Because if you look at the scripture, Jesus is saying, you're supposed to be angry with every form and appearance of evil. If God is angry with the wicked every day, how can you be around people cussing and drinking and be comfortable? How can you be around someone who sweethearting and be comfortable? How can you be around someone living a homosexual, lesbian lifestyle and call him your friend? How could you be friends with transvestites and transgender? Only thing they got to do is come over to my kingdom because I can't be friends with you. How can the two walk unless they agree? If you could be comfortable around someone who cussing, it means you cuss too. If you can be comfortable around someone who drink it, it means deep down inside, you are an alcoholic too, just waiting for the right time. Yes. If you can be around someone comfortably and they have a sweetheart, you can sweetheart soon too, very soon, if you're not doing it already. If you can be around someone every day bashing the house of God and sit there comfortably, it's because that's what in your heart too. If you could be around somebody gossiping and scandalizing other people's names, that's because what you went to. You cannot be around the same, some, you can, according to this, now God's word cannot lie. You hate them. If you hate those that do evil, say hate them that do evil. Hate them that do evil. You cannot bear them. You know what bear me? I can't stand, I love the person, but I can't stand to be around people who do obey. I don't pray for them. I don't understand. No, if you're doing obey, I pray for God to kill you. I say that every broadcast. I will make it very clear. If you do obey, if you do witchcraft, if you manipulate, if you do stuff for man, woman, to get money, to get power, I pray every night. Know that. Have it recorded. These are recorded. I I pray every day for every witch, for every obey worker to die, them and their whole family. That's my prayer. I'm an apostle. I don't want you living. I can't bear obey workers. I can't bear witchcraft, war, warlock. I cannot bear those who, who plant witchcraft. I can't bear those. I can't stand it in me. Uh -huh. When people talk about adultery, I can't bear that. It don't make sense to me. I, every day I try to figure out, it's one day or the other, I try to figure out adultery. How, it, how, how is it that someone can leave the covenant they made with another person before God and everyone else? Abandon that person, that money, that taking care, that love, that affection and everything and go towards someone else. That, that's the dumbest thing. I, it don't make sense. It's dumb. Amen. Take all your money, spend it, squander it. Lose your house, lose yes. your family, yes. lose your money, lose yes. your integrity, yes. lose your character, yes. lose your well-being, yes. get sick, widow away, yes. lose everything you work for all this life for. That's dumb. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. That's it. Preach. Like the fellow on the street says, cheaper to keep her. <laughs> it's cheaper to keep her. You lose less. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. You know what it is? Divorce and thing, and 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 the dumbest thing is the people who committing adultery always promising the person they gonna leave their wife, they can leave their wife or husband for you. Come on, you take people fooling. Very seldom. Very seldom. That's right. You gotta do some deep dark witchcraft to pull them yes. over. Yes. yes Most of the time, hallelujah, they can sit on you for years and yes. wither you away. I know some people who got in that type of relationship, they aged by fifty years. Oh Hallelujah. You hooking up with these old man and old woman and thing. They can suck your life out. I know a young lady, young and beautiful. Amen. She hung up with this old man. He sucked her. She looked old and withered away. Yes, sir. Sin. Sin. He looking young and young off her. You know the devil can suck your life force, eh? Yeah. An old man. You see these old young girls who fool around with this old man? Uh -huh. He fooling with them for money. He can suck spiritual virtue. 
Now he can be getting younger and younger, yes. and in a couple of months you can look like an old hike. Yes. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, shout. Yes. Hallelujah. There's some going and up. Yes. There's some pulling. He puts spiritually, he pulling life out of you. Not a woman looks so old and beat up. Mm. A young fella dealing with an old woman for money. Uh, wah, wah, wah. Now, what? I ain't talking about marriage. I'm talking about doing adulterous or fornicating lifestyle. Now, in marriage, you cover each other. You will grow together. But I'm talking about this ungodly right child. But back to this. Jesus said, man, you can't bear evil. I'm a preacher that can't bear evil. Yes, sir. No, no, sir, 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 sir. Uh, 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 uh. And I tell all the pastors around here, I know every last one, and they know, don't call me to come with foolishness because I don't need to come preach for you for no couple dollars. God don't deal with me like that. <laughs> and if you call me, know I can say what Jesus taught me to say. Preach. <laughs> whether you invite me back or not, whether you give me money or not, I don't need your honor where you I don't need, I don't That's preach because I am free. Say I'm free. I'm free. I work fully for Jesus Christ. Fun time. He takes care of all my responsibility and my bills. I am fully committed to the kingdom of God. So when I prof I don't have to prophesy no good thing to you. You keep go to your street prophetic ministry. Go to your corner prophetic ministry. Let him give you words. All kind of street prophets now. They can't find themselves in church. All kind of street prophets. Now, I don't have a problem with street evangelists. Amen? Amen. Because when you evangelize and people come to Jesus, Jesus get the glory. Yes. But when you have these street prayer meetings and these street prophets, it's to bring glory to self. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, help me. It never brings glory to Jesus. People do these things because it brings glory to them. So Jesus said in Revelation 2 and 2, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. I can't stand murder in the country. I can't stand carnival. Good young people, I get disgusted. Good young people dancing around in the street naked, butt naked. Now who going to pick them up as a wife? Huh? Maybe another whore. You got to have that soaring spirit. That's a horrid spirit. When you walk around, tell this to the world. If you walk around the street naked, showing all your brass, your bogey, and your <laughs> bread pudding. Jesus. For the world to see. Pictures and recording. That means yes. you have no regard for nothing. The word carnival means celebration of the flesh. Yes. It's the season now, right? And we are Christian nation. We are Christian people. And we have the celebration of the flesh. Don't you know the Bible said the work of flesh will kill? The flesh kill it. So everyone who's out there parading is dead or going to be dead. In the spirit. Because they've already given themselves over to the flesh. You shaking up, gyrating on woman on woman. You's a lesbian. If a woman whining upon another woman on these videos, I watch it. See, they, they, they see, it's a, it's a deception. Two men winding up on each other. Everyone will say they're sissy, they gay, they homosexual. But two women winding up on each other, they think it's normal. It's still a lesbian, homosexual spirit. Isn't it the same thing? Man, help me somebody, man. Let me expose this thing one time. Yeah. Two women winding up on each other in the street or in the club or music video. Aren't they lesbians? Yes. So there's a homosexual spirit release during these time of carnival and festival like these things. I can't bear that. I get disgusted when I drive around and see concerts coming into our city. They bring in these murderous artists. They bring in artists that promoting smoking ganja, shooting and killing gang violence, calling women whores and bees, and they promote this kind of adultery, this fornication, this, this mentality, especially in the Caribbean and North America, this promotion of degrading women. And people pack out the stadium and call themselves Christian. They smoke joints there and they drink liquor. And that's what they call a good time. And the devil is killing them. 
Then they can be there the next two days. God is good. How you doing? God is faithful. Yeah, he's faithful, but your skin is wicked. You lost. You're deceiving yourself. Shout hallelujah. 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 And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. Revelation 2 and 2. Who's speaking? Who's speaking? Christ. Christ Jesus. Jesus is speaking. This is the ministry of Jesus. We're still on the kingdom of God. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them what? Liars. So you can sit down and everyone who say there's apostles, you jump on. Yeah. Half of these people who say they're apostles are not. More than half of these who say they are prophets are not. Those who say they're pastors, God didn't call. Many of them. Many are called, and but many are not called. So what did Jesus say? You have tried them. Yeah. I can try your life. Don't, don't. You ain't gonna come around me call yourself apostle. I can try your life. I can dig deep into your life. Why? Because Jesus told me to try you. Test the spirit and see if they be of God. One of the main characteristics of a true apostle is they are humble and submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Most of these people who call themselves apostles are arrogant. They're prideful. They're all about money. They're all about self. They're all about self-promotion. They're all about self-glorification. They're all about man worshiping them. It's all about idolatry. Most of the people, the Bible says, he who does the desired office of a bishop must be what? Temperance, self-control, meek. Run his family well. We see the exact opposite. Arrogant, puffed up, given to filthy lucre like money. Don't run their household well. Their wives are not subjected to them. The wives are nothing more than Jezebels trying to control them and the church and everyone else around them. The children are tyrants, tyrants. That sometimes many of the children ain't saved. Look at these bishops, many of them. The children ain't saved. Look, 90% of these bishops who I know around here, the children ain't saved. Many don't go to church, that's right. Many don't go to church, ain't interested in church, have no desire in the house of God. How can you be in the house of God representing him? The Bible said, if you cannot take care of your own household, you are not fit to be a bishop. You're not fit even to be a deacon. Set your skin down. Get your family together. Get your life together before you want these ministry roles. Because why? If you don't have the big, the, but Jesus said, if you cannot take care of your own household, how can you take care of the household of God? When I'm home, I sweep, clean, mop, wash. If I don't do that home, you think I have a desire to clean and clean? If I don't sit down and say, wife, family, this is the direction. You think I have a direction for this household? If I can't teach them the word and, and they live it under my instruction and my lifestyle, you think you other people will do it? We got it all backwards because it's not kingdom, it's flesh. Amen. It's man. It's man promoting themselves. It's man feeling all I got to do is find a, a rented space. Pay the first, last, and security deposit. And that's church. The devil is a liar. The church is a very spiritual thing. It's a, the power of Jesus Christ. The church is the blood-bought people of God. It was purchased with the price, with the blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus purchased the church. Don't play around with the church, people of God. I'm going to skip down. Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Who is speaking? Who is speaking? Say it loud. Who is speaking? Jesus. Jesus. Who is he speaking to? His disciples on the Mount of what? Olives. And he's also speaking to who? Every believer that should follow. That's how you interpret scripture. Who is the author? It's written by Matthew, one of the apostles who was with Jesus. Who is the speaker? Jesus Christ. Who is he speaking to? The disciples who were with him on the Mount of Olives. It didn't say 
The twelve, it said the disciples. Remember, Jesus had more than twelve disciples. But twelve he chose to be called apostles. And who else is he speaking to? To wor the world. What is What type of message is this Jesus is teaching? Is this a preaching? No, right? No. Is this a teaching? Yes. Kind of, yes. Is it prophetic? Yes. Yes. What type of prophecy is it? Personal prophecy? Future. No. Future prophecy. There it is. Come on, give me a, something, a round of applause. Amen. So prophecy is, I can give a prophetic word to you. This is what the Lord said to you. Sometimes I can come here and give a prophetic word to the body of Christ. Some, the local assembly. Sometimes I can go in another ministry and give a word for that assembly. Sometimes I can give a national word. You've seen it. I don't brag on it, but before the storm, the Lord said what's happened. That was a national pro pro prophecy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last week I said, Trump is, I don't know if I said that on here. I record, you recorded. I said, Trump, they're going to let him go. Did I, you recorded that? Mm -hmm. That's on the recording. Mm -hmm. Last week I said, they gonna, because he's a man of God, he did all those things. God is going to release him from the impeachment. Mm -hmm. You saw on Wednesday night, they let him go victoriously. Sometimes it's a global issue of what's going to happen. Some prophecies are just straight from the word of God. I mean, I could go in the word of God and say, Jesus said in the last days, when he comes, these are going to happen. Nation will rise up against nation. Verse 7, kingdom against kingdom. There should be famines and pestilence and earthquakes. That's going to happen. It's happening. It's happening. So I don't be surprised when these people record these little yeah. videos, double O, I saw earthquake. Man, that's it. That Jesus said that 2,000 years ago. That ain't no prophecy. That ain't no new prophetic word. And they have thousands of likes because they said they had a dream and they saw an earthquake. If you have earthquake, then you have water rising. Well, that ain't no issue. Man, come on, prophesy about something real, man. Now, that's, that, this is going to happen. There's going to be war. So don't let nobody come and prophesy, oh, it's going to get better. No, it's Jesus said. If Jesus said it, then that settles it. Amen? Amen. If Jesus says something, doesn't matter what a man says. Jesus said there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be pestilence. There's going to be disease. There's going to be famine. There's going to be earthquake. If it doesn't happen, it's about to happen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, it's going to get better. Get better for who? Verse 8. All these are the beginning of what? Sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Jesus said, that's going to happen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you a poppy? I talked about it last week. Are you ready to be afflicted for Jesus? Glory to God. This ain't a popular message. This isn't going to get thumbs up and red hearts on social media. They shall, then they shall deliver you to be afflicted. Are you ready to be afflicted? You ain't answering it. Regardless of you, it's going to happen to the church. The church will be afflicted. It's happening and it will continue to happen until Jesus said, Why? And you shall, and shall kill you. Oh my goodness. See, we comfortable on this side of the world. When Christians are being persecuted for the gospel of Jesus Christ every single day. Do you know that? Yes. Man, come on, man. Why are you trying to get a house and a car and a preaching engagement? And brothers and sisters who are barely standing up for the righteous cause of Jesus Christ. Declaring his word, a word of being killed. Amen. Innocently. Amen. I was reading an article this week, where this outbreak of the coronavirus in Wuhan, China, that the Christians are there with their masses on in the street, giving tracks out. Oh, Karamashi, And we on the side are so lazy with the gospel. Amen. And the doctor that first diagnosed it and tried to warn them, he while treating patients contracted the coronavirus and last week died. They say that to say that's how contagious the disease is. And the reports are growing around the world. Don't think it can't hit any nation. 
People are traveling all the time. Hey. People are going to the States. People are going on cruises. People are, are, are on boats and are on planes everywhere around the world. Do not think for a minute. There are people who from all around the world who lived in China and coming back home, including this one. You better pray, Jesus. Oh, God, I know God, oh, God, y'all better listen to me. Forget the holy man. Come, I want to be. Listen to this word and pray. Yes, hallelujah. Jesus. I don't want to say it, but I can say it. Any one of these places on this region, if it gets out, it can, you don't know how close we are to being wiped out, boy. Amen. Amen. As a doctor, everyone I see now, I ask if they come in contact with anyone. And I mean that. I'm very serious. There were students all around the world who were studying in Wuhan. Not only Wuhan, it was spread throughout. I think it's up to almost 50,000 reported infectious cases. The numbers won't be fully correct as yet. <laughs> what am I saying? The kingdom of God requires haste. Jesus required haste. Jesus prophesied, these are the things that shall happen that will signal that the time is now, but it's not fully near yet because Jesus has a ministry. He has an agenda, and that agenda is right here. And this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When shall the end come? After the gospel is preached to all nations. Huh? After the gospel is preached to all nations. After the gospel of what? The kingdom. The kingdom is preached to all nations. In all the world for a witness unto all nations. Yeah. Now the world in the Bible means, it's very interesting. The word world means every place of influence. Glory to God. Let me break it down. There are three words in the Bible used. There is world, there is nation, and the earth. The earth is the Lord. The earth is the physical ground. In the Old Testament, that's Terah. That's the physical earth. You go from on a plane here, you go there, you stand on the earth. That's on Grand Bahama. You take a plane to New York City, step on the ground, that's the earth, that's New York. That's the earth. Nations are interesting. Nations are the people that reside on that earth. So in where the land mass is called Canada, the people that live there, that's the nation of Canada. If you go, if there's a, a land mass called maybe the South Pole, and no people are there, that ain't a nation. A nation is made up of people. A nation is made up of families. Nation is made up of economies. So you have the business, you have education, you have health care, you have the legal profession, you have government, you have the political arena. And every nation, these are the systems of life. You go to a food store, there's the food system, there's the social service, there's the education department, there's the department of health, there's the department of uh, defense. Hallelujah. There's construction, there's fishery, there is tourism. These are called what? Industries. That is the world. The gospel must be preached in every what? World. That's why as a physician, I got to preach. Because I'm in a world of medicine. There are some people who are in medicine that when I talk the gospel, they understand because they know I know what they know. And I say in the gospel, I can defend the gospel of the kingdom to anybody in the medical arena. Using medical terms too. Now I can track an electrician. He know the electrical world. He knows this ply. You need to ply this. You need uh, three quarter inch wire. It, see, that's a language. Or fisheries. You need, you, need, you need this line. You need this pole. I'm going to be traveling my boat at 16 knots. Going north, north, east. Uh, 30 miles. And then I'm going to go across south, south, west by 15 degrees. They understand maritime. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. They're in an arena. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. You got to take this gospel of the kingdom to every arena you're in. Come on, shout hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you something. This has freed me up. 
Most of the people fighting for mega churches. But guess what? On a daily basis, I share the gospel of the kingdom in my arena. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. Are you sharing the kingdom of God in your area of influence? What is your area of influence? See, this changed my mind. Get ready for kingdom revelation. See, when you're churchy, you, 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 you're being taught to dress up on Sunday, put your big clothes on, and your big hat, and your suit, and your tie, and sit down in a pew, and that's you feel like you're doing something good for God. Oh, help me, somebody. Do you know, I'm going to say some things right now. Now, Do you know that most of the stuff we call church is waste? The pastor and a few ministers and 90% of the congregation sits down and does nothing for the Lord Jesus Christ. But come in and they somehow believe that their devotion to God is acceptable because they come and spend two, two and a half hours on a Sunday service. They feel they've done something wonderful for the kingdom of God. No, that's church. That ain't kingdom yet. Do you know that you could go to church and not be a part of the kingdom? Yes. Do you know that you could dress up every Sunday and go to midweek service and go to revival? And some of these places, every blessed week is revival. I'm a doctor, so I, th I taught this before. When I think of revival, I'm a doctor. I think medically. I think about ECG. I think about defibrillators. I think about in the hospital when someone is flatlined. And they say, Claire, and we put the defibrillator on them and shock them back to pieces. And they back to life. That's what it means to revive. In a hospital, if I revive somebody, I put the defibrillator on them or the AED machine, and I put an electrical shock through their body to shock the heart back into life. And then we pump them with heart increasing medication to stimulate epinephrine, adrenaline. We push it through the IV line to stimulate atropine. We stimulate the heart back into contraction to come back. Then if that we put the defibrillator, you put IV fluids. So if you have a revival every week, that means the people must be dead, 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 dead. Amen. <laughs> You need to be revived. Next week, revival. January, revival. Fretman, how dead are the people? Amen. If I'm teaching you all this year, so we worship it, we praise it, we shout, we fast it, we in the word, and after six months, you still need revival every month? My God. I need to shock you for real with the defibrillator. Amen. <laughs> something ain't right with you. I know a guy, he used to have a revival every two weeks revival. Instead of reviving the people, he was killing the people, actually. Because if every other week you got to have a three-night revival, when the people can rest? Revival, revival, revival. What are you doing in this revival? That's why I don't have them things. Only if the Holy Spirit, revival. And I know we are alive. We don't need a revival now. I put revival out for the loss. I might put a tent up and say, we have a revival, bring the loss. But revival for the same amount of people in your church every week, you tithing, you wearing the people down. But I know what the intention is. It ain't for no revival, it's for money. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. And they like revival at the end of the month when it's paid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There ain't no revival in the middle of the week. No, they ain't no revival in the middle of the week. End of the month, the first of the month, when you still got a couple of dollars on you. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Now, the people that you pastor need revival every few months, you got to check your ministry. Amen. Amen. Money making scheme. Most of it. Yes, some are beneficial, some is a scheme. You got to be careful. Why? Because. The, the, the church age has taught you, you must come and sit down. I used to be a church boy. Oh, I used to love church. Until <laughs> I came into the kingdom of God. When I came into the kingdom of God and I realized, wait a minute now. Wait. Me sitting down in the back here, paying the pastor all the pastor's bills and setting up his family. Only his family can make money. Huh? They tell you, serve God, forget God. But then, 
They sending their kids off to college. Their kids coming back, getting good jobs, marrying good spouses, driving the nice cars. They building the nice homes. Wait a minute. That don't make sense. Then I must just follow God. They used to tell me that. I was on the ministry where, oh, don't worry about no education. You don't need no education if you have a degree. But now I have my education. They call in and want money. <laughs> they want my advice. They want a tithe from me. They want an offering from me. Right? Amen. What's the double talk? So I begin to study this kingdom. And I begin to see. And I don't blame them. It's a church mentality. Come here and give all your money to me. They think. Come to the church, give all your money to that local assembly. And we can take care of everything. And when you come, it's just an entertainment system. And when you come in the door, hallelujah, you usher, usher you through. Like your waiters. You sit at your chair and then your nice music is played. And then your wonderful choirs perform. And then your homosexual singers sing and dance and have the spirit. Then you two, three verses, and then your speaker comes on and preach you happy. Amen. And you go home and don't remember Christ's two scriptures that you were taught. Mm -hmm. I promise Jesus ain't no church can beat me up like that. He ain't gonna beat me, rattle me up. Devil is a liar. The kingdom is this gospel of the kingdom. I am called to equip and train you, not to bust up my voice. Now, if the Holy Ghost move upon me, then we will shout and praise. But even the Lord know you can't do that every week. You'll bust up yourself. Yeah. You ain't gonna kill me. Oh, I got a young wife. I, I can't leave her. Amen. Mm -hmm. I can enjoy that. Amen. The devil is a liar. You ain't gonna bust me up, eh, Carrie? Amen. That's why these guys, a lot of them give up. They My bust God. up themselves. Hey, I'm God. <laughs> you do that for five years, you'll tear up yourself. Amen. Amen. Imagine that. Two, three times a week. Then you can say, God, I did it for the glory of God. God didn't tell you to do that. The Lord said, I've called you to take this gospel of the kingdom. Did he say, apostle? No. Then he said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then the end shall come. This can be preached by the preachers, by the prophets, by the evangelists, by the teachers. Who he was talking to? His disciples. Are you a disciple of Christ? Yes. So if you are a disciple of Christ, then... You and everyone has a role to play in taking the message of the kingdom to all the world. Can I submit to you, if you're not doing it, then Jesus is not coming? Amen. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come. Jesus said, even so, go preach, go preach, go preach. <laughs> Amen. You want him to come, but you want him, you want to sit back and you want 10% of the church to do 90% of the work. That's happening in every church across the board. 90% of the church work is being done by 10% of the people. 90% of Christians are inactive in sharing the gospel, bringing another person to Christ. If I ask most people over the last 12 months, how many people did you bring into a personal relationship of with Jesus Christ sharing your testimony and sharing the word, most people cannot count it on one hand. I'm not going to ask you in here because I'm not going to embarrass you. Amen. So we have 7 billion people. And you go to India and China and the reports are Bhutan, Nepal, Pakistan, and the reports are there are only 10% of those populations that are Christian. And we feel that we've done a great work in the, in the nation. We feel that we've accomplished something great. And more than half of the world's population does not even know, never has even heard the name of Jesus Christ. You have nations in the Middle East that are 90% other religion. Are you happy with that? I can't be happy with that. Jesus said the end shall come when this God, Matthew 24 and 14. So if I continue to have church and waste time having fashion show, hat show, Sunday brunch, I might enjoy that. Now, you don't have to have the same passion. This is my personal assignment. 
I'd love to share it with other people. That's why I'm sharing it with you. The church is going to stop having all these Super Bowl parties. That's what church is doing. Having Super Bowl party, having fashion show. That's not the assignment of the church. Now, if you're doing it, praise God, that's you. you ain't gonna ever, I, we're not going to ever have that. Because most of those things are demonic at the core, anyhow. You know that all these major events, they are filled with demonic, sacrificial things. Do you see some of the half times of some of these events? Demonic. We listen to a guy who exposes all of the demonic rituals that are done during these major sporting events. You wouldn't imagine it. That's how these people get to the top. Amen. There's a covenant they make, satanic covenants they make. There's sacrifices. There's sorcery. There's witches that they work with and pay. Just like we have pastors. They have their witches and they have their spiritualists who they consult. To gain power and wealth and influence in this life. Well, more than half of the world never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you flip through the channels and all your hair is, bless me, bless me. You can get this house. You can, if you get a house, that don't expand the kingdom of God. If you get a five cars, God can give you five cars. Does that expand the kingdom of God, really? If God is going to bless you, money coming to you, and you don't barely pay no tithe and offering now. So God can send you money, and you can take that and buy what you want and don't give the church a Christ thing. Play forget. Does that expand the kingdom of God? No. So why are we wasting all of this time with all of these wonderful teachings? They're good teachings. You can get a house, you can get a car. The best is yet to come. Better days ahead. Even the songs. I'm listening to the songs. Since I've come into this understanding, Matthew 24 and 14, I'm listening to the what we call gospel songs. And they're not lifting up the name of Jesus. They're not telling the world about the blood, about the cross, about salvation, about the coming kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, about how to enter into the kingdom of God now. Better it's coming, better, better. This is my season, all about me, me. It is humanistic, it's not kingdomistic. Listen to the songs, listen to the sermons, but that's what's popular. That's what people want to have. Better days are coming for me. Honey, if you in the kingdom of God, seek ye first. The kingdom of God is righteous. Everything shall be added unto you. I rarely ask God for things now for the last few years. Amen. Rarely. Only if he say, now I release you to pray and to see this thing to come into pass. Amen. Or if you tell me, say it once, and that's it. I get about the kingdom work. Amen. When you're in the kingdom of God, you don't have to pray for a bunch of stuff. I don't pray about shoes. I don't pray about shoes. I don't ask God for clothes. I don't ask God for a house. Those are natural, human, basic needs that he is committed to take care of you if you seek the kingdom. And this gospel of the kingdom. Who can preach this gospel of the kingdom in all the world? Who? Huh? Oh, so like you, thank you, wife, for answering for me. So, you know, a couple of years ago, I got a revelation of this, and you know what I did? I began to teach the kingdom of God. And right now, when I look back in this short period of time, the amount of, we are on like four or five global television stations, right from here, the same little black boy who grew up in the ghetto. Grew up in the ghetto, poor. Family was poor on both sides. I ain't poor no more. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. Same little boy, back on a little rock. Going to countries where the little, where if you put all of my, the country combined, it would fit in one little city. 
taking the gospel of kingdom to a nation and nations of people. Why? And I, you know, and my wife would tell you, we always go and I always tell her, I would say, my God, how did we get here? We have an invitation book out this year. Like, how did we get here? People are calling us every day from around the world, saying, hey, we had a vision. We want to partner with you. How do we join Kingdom Apostolic Ministry? How do we, something we haven't even responded to yet? Overwhelming. They're in Southern Africa. Almost 60 pastors join Kingdom Apostolic Ministries this month alone. You will see the pictures in them. Another one called me from Liberia. Another one called from, 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 from Cameroon or something. A couple called from Kenya. Hey, man of God, we see you. We know you are. I ain't, I ain't got to them yet. It's so busy. I'm just praying and pushing the kingdom. They said, we want to join. We want to form Kingdom Apostolic in our nation. We are partnering with you. I have to wait and pray and see. See, they really have the vision of Kingdom Apostolic. And that vision is not our vision. Our vision for this ministry is Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations and then the end to come. I want Jesus to come. So if no one wants to preach the kingdom, I am one who is going to do it. Until he comes. Glory God. Amen. Bless the Lord. And every time I do it, he keeps supernaturally opening up mega doors. Amen. And every time I keep doing it, he, he keep taking care of my bills. Amen. Why do you think I just preach like this? I'm working for the man. Come on, shout hallelujah. Amen. Shout Jesus then. Jesus. Jesus. You think I can stop preaching for Jesus to please, you know? And the man pay me? Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Some of you need to get connected with Jesus and let him give you a word. Not your own word now. My wife and I again were talking about it this morning. I said, babe, we don't have a word. We only have the word of what Jesus wants, said, and done. Child, hallelujah. 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 Okay. Luke 4. <laughs> Let me give you about five or so more scriptures. Clap your hands to the Lord if you're getting this today. Yeah. Mm, that's only one or two little clap. <laughs> mm, Luke. Luke chapter 4, verses 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee. And this is after he was tested in the wilderness. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of them. Where did he taught? In their synagogue. How in the world some of these people are all about another place, teaching and preaching and don't have no church they go to? If Jesus himself... Who is the chief prophet? Now, if you're a prophet, you still got to be in the church. Let me plug that in. And he taught in their what? Synagogues. What am I saying? The kingdom of God is, you have to affect the kingdom of God with the people of God first. I don't know little street ministry and thing. I didn't know synagogue. A synagogue is a set place of worship designated for the presence of God. Now, I can have church, I can have my own prayer, my own devotion in my own house. Everybody's supposed to do that. Amen? You're supposed to have the kingdom of God in your own house. But not every house is designated as an anointed place for people, the people of God, to come and worship. Are you hearing me? Amen. Every house, every head of the house should designate. Like every place I've ever stayed, I designated that. This, I said, Lord, this is how I did it. Lord, this house, I de designate as a place for your kingdom and glory to dwell. Bam, in my house. Yes. And sometimes in my place, I had a specific prayer place. And then in my house, I have a specific prayer room. This room is my prayer room. When I go in there, that's God. The whole family, this is our prayer room. Every one of you should have a prayer place or a prayer room. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Now, not because my house is a prayer 
place for me and my family to meet the Lord. And I dedicated the yard. I anointed the yard. I anointed the building. I anointed the place. Every single thing. The furniture came. I anoint. They belong to the Lord. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I told you how to live a kingdom life. Every vehicle I get, we come together. We anoint this vehicle in the name of Jesus. This vehicle belongs to you, Lord Jesus. So who obligated to protect my car from accident? So when that uh, other Jeep gone out, I took him back to them. I said, the owner needs his vehicle. They called me back on the last few weeks, said, come there and see what you want. I went there, so I said, give me that. They said, all right, I can put it together. I've taken the old one, I can give you this new one. Brand new one. Come on, Sean, hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hallelujah. It belongs to the king. Amen. The house of God, we come here, everything we get, anoint in the name of Jesus, belong to everything. That's kingdom. So I can never come in here and say, this is my church. This, this, every item in here was dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. Who owns it? Who owns the house of God? God. And who anoint, I anointed the sin. We had a service many years ago consecrated. This place is anointed unto the use of God's kingdom for his purpose to declare the gospel around the world from here. We anointed it in the name of Jesus. The saints laid hands all over this place. Bam! This is the house of God now. Amen. See, people don't know these things are spiritual. Let me, let me go get one. Two by four place and go there and then it's anointed to God. No, 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 no. So Jesus taught in their synagogues. Now watch this now. Luke, stay still, Luke now. Luke 4, verse 43. What does it say? I want you to get this. Luke 4 and 43. We're talking and our theme is the ministry of the kingdom. Jesus' ministry in the kingdom. What does it say? Verse Luke 4 and 43. What does it say? Read. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of... No, man. Stop for a minute. Everyone get in your Bible. Take a minute. I want you to see that. Man, I'm going to get that. I want you to look at it. You need a Bible? Turn that. Luke, I want you to see it. I want you to underline it. It's going to change your thinking. Everybody, let's read together. You get in there, woman of God. You could read this. I want everyone to see this. I want you to circle in the Bible. Matthew 4 and 24, circle in your Bible. This next part here, Luke 4 and 43. What is it? Luke 4 and what? 43. This is the basis of where we're going to move from as a people and as a ministry in 2020 and beyond. More importantly, this is what Jesus said must be done. We just saw Matthew 4 and 24 said this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. We saw that, right? Highlight in your Bible. Now let's look at what Jesus said again in another passage concerning the kingdom of God and his purpose and his assignment for the kingdom of God, which we all as people of God should adopt and not get stuck in churchiness. What does it say? Read. And he said unto them, read it, I ain't hearing you all, man. Come on, please, we're recording live. Read. Luke 4 and 43. What does Jesus say? And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. Why was Jesus sent? Man, y'all. Now, y'all are smart people now. Amen. You listen and watch the smart people. I can read it again. Did Jesus come? Oh, why did Jesus come? Oh, he came to seek and save that which is lost. Yeah, that's part of it. Why did Jesus come? Yeah, he came uh, to the Jews. Ah, uh, he came to the Gentiles. It's going to highlight half of what people are doing is wrong. Half of what we call, I had to repent when I read this, because half of what I did was foolishness and waste of time. Not half, less than half, but some of you are half, some of you are three, three quarters, some of you, most of what you've done, over the years, called in ministry was not what Jesus asked you to do, was not what Jesus wanted done, and it was not what Jesus did himself. Amen. You and I got to go back today, everyone listening, watching, and scrap what we did. I'm happy it's 2020. It's a new decade. Hallelujah. 
I put behind the 90s. I put behind 2000 to 2010, 2010 to 2020. Praise be to the Lord. God has given us a new decade to get this right. What did Jesus say? Let's read. And he said unto them, I must preach what? Love to the world. I come to preach love. Huh? Jesus, I am the lamb. I'm the, I come to preach love to everyone. No. Did he say that? No. What did he say he came to preach? Kingdom. What did he say he came to preach? Kingdom. What did he say he must preach? The kingdom of God. To where? To other, other cities, cities also. Other Why? For therefore am I sent. Why was Jesus sent? The word sent means apostolic sending. This is where we get the word apostle. It means to be sent with authority from one government to another. From one kingdom to another kingdom. As an ambassador. Why was Jesus sent? Preach. Where? To other cities. Other cities. So, you think he still want that agenda done? Yeah. Well, he wants us to have church time. Oh, there he go. He go. Yeah, 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 yeah. want us to do it now. Yeah, you can have all the Holy Ghost jerking and jiving and singing and dancing. As long as when you get up, you continue preaching the kingdom like what he did. Yeah. Is he our master? Is he our teacher? Yes. Is he our Lord? Yes. Is he our owner? Yes. yes. So if he's all that, we got to duplicate what he does, eh? Uh -huh. If someone is your teacher and I teach you one plus one is two, okay. I expect you to count what? One plus one is two. Yeah, yeah. Amen. If you put one plus one is three on the test, I can give you zero, a duck egg. The people who mentored me in medicine and showed, no, this is how you examine like this. Or the books we read that say, no, this is how you do it. That's, not, that's the teacher. This is the textbook you use for the test. When the test came, if you put what you want, do you get a duck egg? You wouldn't, be, you wouldn't pass grade school. So how is it that most of the church is not doing what the master left as the instruction to be done? Jesus said, I must go and preach the kingdom. That's why I was sent. And he's Lord and Master. Then all of a sudden, you now pick up that, okay, I, I have another agenda. Or I can do half of it. I can open up an orphanage, but I'm not going to tell them about the kingdom. Yeah, that's failure. I can let even healing. I can lay hands on all the sick people. They all can come out of wheelchairs. But I listen to that. I watch healing ministries. We have a healing ministry. Whether it's by physical medicine, some people get healed just in the clinic by the supernatural power. Sometimes I have to administer counseling. Sometimes I have to minister medication. Sometimes in the church setting, when we went to people, we've gone to Asia, we've seen deaf ears open and the dumb speak. We've seen that. We've Amen. seen demons cast out of people. Real, real, real. Amen. And their mind and their lives become whole. That's a healing ministry. But do you know what? In spite of all of that healing I've done, to thousands of people oh my God. Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the wisdom of God and Amen. just using me as a vessel if I didn't tell them about the kingdom of God they could still die and go to hell and don't fulfill their purpose Amen. Amen. so healing ministry don't impress me Amen. prophecy don't impress me if it don't bring people into kingdom focus. Preaching a nice sermons and gone going to do. Come on, slap two people in the head and uh, pull two ponytails and say, yeah. Oh, Lord. Well, well, come on, preacher. Huh? Sign up. Come on, come on, preacher. If that don't move me into a greater level of kingdom focus, that when I leave that door on Sunday, I go out and impact a world, and I go into my place of influence, where there's yes. my family, yes. then to my neighborhood, then to my community, 
then to my professional colleagues, then to my country, and then by the grace of God, if I've been faithful to that, he will open up the world, and I can go to other nations, whether through television, through radio, through social media, or physically going there. Then all of that stuff we call ministry is nothing. Amen. Oh, Lord. You also love me? Yeah. Mm, I know this is... Uh -huh. Okay, let's move on. Let's go quickly. Uh -huh. Math of Luke 8, verse 1. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. I can read it again. This is the ministry of Jesus that he did. And he don't expect nothing less from us. Read Luke 8 and verse 1. And it came to pass afterwards, read, that he went throughout every city and village. How many cities and villages you've gone through? And you're saying, Jesus, I follow Jesus. I have desired to follow Jesus. Follow him in what? How are you following him? Are you going in every city and village? <laughs> preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom? Are you going into every city because your master did it so you're following after his footsteps? Or you won't be like bishop so-and-so, prophet so-and-so, someone on TV. I won't be like them. Ooh, uh, they just preach like, oh, come on now, uh, come on. I don't want to be like nobody. I don't want to be like Jesus. I, it's not a man on this earth I won't be like. Now, some people I respect and I honor. I like the way they minister. But let me tell you something. Since I found my place in the kingdom of God, the only person that will be is me. Because only me could be and preach the kingdom of God like he told me to preach it. Come on, give God praise. Uh -huh. Only person you need to be is you. Oh, glory to God. Help me somebody. Let me preach to this audience. Uh, we got too many imitators. Uh, we got too many spectators. Uh, we got too many people who try to be like other people. We got too much idol worship. When Jesus said, you can pick up the cross, yes. follow me. You can take the kingdom and preach it just like me. And you will be just like me. Amen. So if you're not preaching and teaching the good tidings of the kingdom, who are you like? Huh? Who are you like? Who, who really is your master and Lord? Who are you really following? Man. Some old preacher. Some old pastor who used to follow. Some old woman that you, you won't be like because you see it, the glitz and the glamour. You think it's some money to be made. You think it's some power, some, some flashy light, some camera, some platform you will be on. That's what you're thinking. That's what most of this stuff about. Little, little amount of people, small amounts, are actually going from city to village. Pastor, when I can preach in the pulpit, you don't need, I don't need a pulpit. I was calculating it yesterday as the Lord was dealing with me and today for this day, man, I said, I said, Holy Spirit, how are we going to do this? I said, how many nations? There are 196 official recognized nations in the world. By the U.S. and by the U.N. There are other countries that have different territories. So don't cover all the places, but there's 196. How many of you are excited about going into every one of them? I was praying yesterday, Lord, how I can get into 196 of them. Glory to God. I won't be like you so much. I don't want to be like Jake's. I don't want to be like Dr. So-and-so. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be like them. I want to be like Jesus. I get into 196 nations by the glory of God. Starting right in this city first. Well, I want to sweep through this city quickly. You see my mentality? It's like Jesus. So while they're fighting over a couple members, I think about the world. <laughs> while they fight, that's why people come here, don't come here, don't change me. You see that? I have a kingdom mindset. 
It's totally different. It didn't come from man. It come from the Holy Ghost carry. Amen. My mentality didn't come from a man. Now some men taught and I listened. I got some good insight. Do you have a kingdom mindset? Yes. When I pray now, I don't pray about house and car. I pray for God. Lord, let your kingdom fill the earth. That's how I pray. Open up every nation to the kingdom. Say it right now. Pray with me right now. Let me do it right now across the area. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand as your son and your servant with the house of God. Open up every nation for the kingdom. Let the gospel of the kingdom go into every region, every nation, every territory. Lord, awaken your church the kingdom message. That's why I'm concerned about dream ministry. Amen. I can teach on dream and all day long, day and night. What? How am I going to advance the kingdom? Amen. If I tell you what you dream last night and what that mean to you, how in the devil that's going to cause India to come to Jesus? Tell me. Amen. That seemed to be the new thing now, dreams. How to interpret dream. What I tell you before Christians was interpreting dream, the devil was interpreting dreams. Amen. Amen. They got more numbers book and dream book, King Tut knowledge book out there. More than any Christian have on dreams. So if you want to talk about dreams, the witches and warlocks know how to interpret dreams and give you a number to play. Think I ain't no, I ain't no fool. Amen. That's why I, I ain't too caught up on, on following people talking about dream. Mm -hmm. Now the dream help you get delivered and set free. Praise God. Now when the interpretation comes, Oh, in that dream, you saw a snake, you saw yourself flying, that means this, well, good. Get yourself clean up, delivered, sanctified. Why? To do the work of the kingdom. That's what it's about. Some people are caught up on dream. Some people build ministry on dream. Yeah. Build ministry on prophecy. Build ministry on, oh, I got a word for you. Come on, that don't affect the kingdom of God like it should. Amen. That is just self and flesh. What that mean for me? When people, you know, when people come and tell me, interpret dream, I say, no, no, son. No, I understand that nonsense with you. You go to Jesus Christ, the same Jesus who you talk to, who gets you saved, could tell you what you dream. You don't need no one to interpret no dream. The same in the Old Testament where you went to a priest or a prophet to tell you what you dream. You have the Holy Ghost. Say, when I dream stuff, who I go to? Jesus, what that mean, Father? And if I wait long enough in his presence or through the week opening up my heart, he'll say, that's what I meant. That's what I was showing you. That's what we, we want quick fix. We want witchcraft workers. We want gypsies. We want psychics. So when we dream or God show us something, they interpret it for us, and then we make them gods in our life. So every time you dream or have a, a, a prophetic word, you got to run back to that gypsy. And now prophets or people who are supposed to be used by God are now becoming psychics and gypsies and witches Amen. and operating under familiar spirit. Because how in the devil you could come up all of a sudden and tell me what my dream mean and you ain't gone to Jesus for it? Amen. So what spirit that come from? Satan. Because even when Daniel, hallelujah, interpreted dreams, he said, oh king, I don't know how to interpret this, but there's a God of the Israelites, there's a God who lives in heaven who will tell us the interpretation of this dream. And he went back and called a three-day fast. He Messiah. So how in the devil people can just pull up what you dream and tell you what it is. Amen. Either they're the familiar spirit or they're the lying spirit. Amen. There's no prophets. The prophets of old, Daniel, the hallelujah, Joseph, they had to go in fasting and prayer to get interpretation. Amen. So how is it you, everyone that called you, you can interpret their dream, their vision? Huh? How is it that 20 people could call you and you could just riddle off, yeah, that dream mean this, that mean that, that mean that, that mean that. With no prayer and no sin, boy, let me go consult the Lord. You stay right there. Some of you know walking under wrong spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Familiar spirit, error spirit. And it's driving you into some things you're only supposed to be in because you should have consulted the Holy Ghost for yourself. You're too lazy. Amen. Lazy. Now, does God speak in dream and vision? All the time, day and night. Every night, God speaks to Amen. me in dreams and vision. Amen. Some of them, I say, okay, Holy Ghost, what it means? Some of them, he tell me, don't worry about it. I've dealt with it already. I was just showing you. Amen. But we're not going to be no gypsy house for you to, every time you dream something, you want to be lazy and want someone to sit down for you to call and interpret your dream. 
That don't expand the kingdom of God into South Africa. That don't cause the kingdom of God to grow in Kenya. I'd rather you preach the kingdom in nations and get nations set free and let God take care of your little dreams. Amen. Your little vision. Your little $50 you won't get. Mm, you also love me? Mm. And that's what I'm lying now. Falling up. Self. Humanistic thing. It ain't nothing done the world. The world is saying we are gods. We, we are humanistic. We, we control our destiny. The church is becoming very secular too. Come to the church. We can tell you what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. How to get a house car money. Now it was prophecy. Now it's dreams. What can be next? We can read your palm. God told us to read your palm. Read your eyes. Read your... your witchcraft. Seeping into the church. Because the church has lost its original mandate. Amen. Mm. Y'all love me. Y'all want to love me. Amen. Got to love me if you want to see Jesus. Amen. Luke chapter 9. Verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them what? Power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Man, there ain't no mystery. When we cast out devils, you ever see me go and promote it? It's, by, it's our right to cast out devils. Why do we pump up these things? Someone come here demon possessed, we cast the devil the hell out, then go and have chicken and fries. <laughs> Amen? Oh, <yeah>. whatever. <laughs> Not every day. Or whatever's for Sunday then or midweek or whatever day the devil get cast. I cast the devil the hell out of my office before. Yes. Yeah. Demon possessed and he I ain't wait for no Sunday. Come Sunday, that devil you come out. I love this. This is what I do. This is what I'm being given authority by the Lord to do. I wait for Sunday, Monday, devil 7 p.m. I'll cast the devil the hell out. Tuesday, 11 a.m. I'll cast the devil the hell out. Wednesday, 1 p.m. You're getting the devil cast the hell out. Thursday at 3.30, I'll cast the devil out. Friday, 4.35, I'll cast the devil out. That's what he gave us authority and power to do. And to cure diseases if you're sick, I'll lay hands for you to get healed. If you meet the right criteria, you get healed and delivered if you have the right criteria. What is that? If you're living holy, you're repenting of your sin, you're turning away. Don't expect for me to lay hands on and cast the devil out if you're going right back to the same old dirty lifestyle. The devil ain't fool and I ain't fool. Demons ain't fool, angels ain't fool. They say this one got their sweetheart right home waiting on them. Don't lay hands, step on them. They're going to waste your time and energy. Then turn around and pull your fate when they know they can't get delivered. So before I even do deliverance, it's Holy Spirit. You want the Spirit say, no, leave them. They ain't ready for no deliverance. Tell them go fast for three days, repent, clean up their life, and then come back and I'll deliver them instantly. There's some people be all night. Come out in the name of Jesus. They get some out, and after a certain time, that's it. I'm like, Lord, why? The Lord, they ain't ready for that. They ain't want to give up that aspect. Everything else they'll do, but they won't give up this aspect of their life. So I ain't going to deliver them. Leave them. Verse 2, Luke 9 and 2, what does it say? And he sent them to preach the what? Luke 9 and 2, read. And he sent them to preach the what? The kingdom. Who, who is sending? Jesus. Is sending who? His disciples, the 12, from verse 9 and verse 1, to preach what? Love, faith, grace, a blessing is coming your way. It's your turnaround season. It's your time of favor. It's your set time. Open heavens. Your miracle is now. Come on, help me. What did he tell them? What did he give them authority to preach? The kingdom of God. To who? Whoever. And to what? Heal the what? Sick. Oh. Mm -hmm. When you all leave here today and you will listen watching, you have no excuse no more. 
This ministry is a dangerous ministry. That's why only a select people like to come here. They could call me whatever they want in the city. When they in trouble, they just call me and come by. Carrie, you'll see it. People ain't fooled. They know exactly who and where you are in the realm of the Spirit of God. But I tell you what, you and I are responsible after the day for what we've heard. I can't blame no preacher no more for my destiny. I can't blame what anybody did in the past. I can't even look at my past. I can't blame my wife. I can't blame my husband. I can't blame my children. <clears throat> I can't blame my college professor. I can't blame, uh, and some people did some very bad things to try to stop and hinder you and I over the years. But guess what? I have a revelation of the kingdom of God, which makes me unstoppable in the power of God. Amen. Because who could stop me preaching the kingdom of God now? Who, 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 could say, who could deny me a pulpit? I don't need to be in a pulpit. I got the platform of the world to take the kingdom to you as well. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he didn't let us yeah, preach in there. You got seven billion people to preach to. This is your training place. I'm here to train you so you can leave here to train the nations. I didn't get no opportunity. Go right to the hospital day. I'm sure you got a hundred, couple hundred people right there you can share the kingdom with. Amen. Go to the capital. Hundred, couple hundred thousand there. Find another nation. Just let us know so we can properly send you. See, Jesus sent him. You didn't just pick up and say, I, I'm with Jesus. I see him do these miracles. Sign. I wonder, I see him cast a devil. I go in too. No, 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 no. The Bible says, and Jesus sent them. See, when you send, there's a certain authority. When an apostle sends you, there's a certain authority. So I don't have a problem with people preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom. But you know why they're not as impactful? It's because they didn't have no sending. Look up there. Amen. An apostle sent me. I was talking to people in South Africa. Apostle Bertrand Baird uh, from Trinidad and Turner Elsa laid hands on me in the uh, early 2000s and sent me. Apostle Sam Phillip from Agape Bible, the three of them just slayed hands on me in front of the church, Agape Bible, there in Trinidad, and sent me apostolically. Apostle Rodney Roberts in 2010 laid hands in front of me, not in a private place, in an open place, open to all the churches, all the ministers, laid hands on me there and sent me openly and publicly to the apostolic work. Bishop Ross Davis. Golden Gates laid hands, prophesy over me, release me publicly. It ain't no secret sending out. That's the problem I have with most of these ministries. They just pop up and, and say they called. No, God don't work like that. Even when Jesus the Christ, the Lord and Savior and God himself was going to be uh, sent to his public ministry, the Spirit of God drove him to the last prophet, the greatest prophet of that time, John, and in front of all the people who were out there getting baptized, being ministered to by John, he was publicly baptized, That's anointed right. by the Holy Spirit, and sent forth to do the work. And even after he came from John, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness for 40 days to be empowered. And we just read in Luke 4, when he came out, the Bible said the Spirit drove him in. When he came out, he came out in the Spirit, the power of the Spirit. And from then he began to teach and preach the gospel of the kingdom around the world. There's a process that even being set. This is a warfare. That's right. You go illegally in the spirit because why? It's pride. Most people I find out can't operate in the kingdom of God because it's pride. What do I mean by pride? God wants to process you. He knows you're not ready for that level. That's why he say share with your family first. People, I'm going to go into global ministry. No, uh, uh, uh. You, you, uh, you don't even want to give up some th certain things to God yet. You think he can send you out there to be devoured by the enemy? No, start with you. Get the kingdom message in you. Work with your family. And work in your local assembly. Get some more training and equipping. When God sees it fit and when he sees you have humble enough heart. When he sees you have the right heart. Then he will anoint you with the spirit of God. 
and you will have power. Wait till you're sent. Luke 9 and 62, what does it say? And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. What did he say? No man put his hand to the plow and looking back is what? Fit for the kingdom. If you start the work of the kingdom and backslide, you 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 not fit. It's a dangerous thing. See, people always think, oh, I could just, I could just, I, 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 could, I could slip up on God. No, God said, the minute you, you, you were moving in my power and you go back to the world, you ain't fit to progress in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. That's why plenty of preachers around here, plenty of people who call themselves believers, God ain't using them. And I say, God, how could you use a couple little people? The unlikely. God said, many of them, I have disqualified them. I have fired many people. They started out and they backslid. I can't trust them. They started moving and the things of God, God wanted to elevate them. They turned back, I ain't doing that. Ah. Every time you keep delaying God, God's okay, you ain't fit for the kingdom. I won't use you. Anytime God opened the door to use you and you pull back, God said, you ain't fit. You see what I, you read it, right? Did you just read that? Anytime God say, I want you to preach and you ain't do it, you ain't fit. And then God said, I want you to go evangelize and you ain't do it, you ain't fit for the kingdom. And then God gave a word, said, go, go to the hospital and pray for the you ain't do it, you ain't fit. If you can't do the simple things, you think God can give you an international platform? Mm-hmm. No, it don't work like that, sweet. It don't work like that. Luke 17 and 20. And when, we still talk about the ministry of Jesus, I'm wrapping up. And when he was demanded, say demanded. demanded. I know this is hurting. This is, this is not an easy word. Because you know what I'm doing? I'm knocking out years of churchiness out of you and I. Amen? Amen. You All that stuff you learn in church, all them years, all them stuff they taught you, it didn't produce no power in your life. It didn't open up no ministerial doors. They indoctrinated you with churchism. They indoctrinated you with the, the prophecy teaching or church of God or Baptist or Anglican or Methodist. They indoctrinated with you with, with their doctrine. Amen. Box you in. Unless you went through their route, you was a nothing. God help you. Some of these denominations, if you being divorced, if you had a child out of wedlock or something, you could never be used. But thank God, that's church, but I ain't the kingdom. Shout hallelujah. Say, I'm in the kingdom. kingdom. Meaning, if even in the kingdom, God could use any and everyone. If he could use a harlot, he could use you. If he could use a donkey, he could use If he could use a prostitute and say, this woman who anointed my body, she can be remembered forever. What, who, which denomination can say, you can't be used because you were divorced? All of this stuff. Oh, woman can't wear a hat. Woman can't wear pants. Come on. What pants have to do with the kingdom? I come from under these things. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, man or woman, I think I don't think no man or woman should wear no tied up thing showing all their shape. But that's true. I understand what they're trying to get at, but it don't affect the kingdom. That shouldn't be a doctrine. You, the woman, you wear pants. You, you God can't use you. You can't wear jewelry. I like jewelry. I can wear my jewelry, and I cast out devils with jewelry on. Hmm? Woman can't wear makeup, man. Please, you got a little blemish. You put your little makeup on, fix yourself a bit. You could wear a little makeup and lipstick and thing. I don't want you looking like Count Dracula. Amen. 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 You know, you <laughs> fix up yourself. Now I know you get trouble because I came under some apostolic. I, but it ain't kingdom. Why are you fighting a where man, where a woman could wear makeup or not, wear pants or not, the world dying and going to hell? Why are you telling guys if they get divorced, they can't remarry? What the devil a young guy, 30, 40 can do, who's still hot up and got the hormones. You tell him he divorced, he can't remarry. What he can do? G up all the woman, right? And backslide and go to hell. If you get divorced, 
whatever happened, you know, so mm -hmm. divorce, find yourself someone nice and new again, get married and live for God. I'd rather you get remarried than not get remarried and be whoring all over the place and thinking a doctrine. Most of these doctrines are doctrines of the devil. Come on, think about it. No, you could say whatever you want. I saw it practically. I saw guys who they said, don't get remarried. Guess what happened to them? They backslidden now. Because you put a God's view on something to say, boy, it might even be his fault. His wife might have cheated on him. So his wife cheated on him then, then guess what? He must stay single all the days of his life. Young man still hot up and still got energy and strength. His wife left him. And he ain't gonna get divorced? I mean, uh, uh, he can't find another. What he can do? He ain't gonna be in pornography and masturbate until Jesus come. And struggle all his life trying to, oh Lord, sorry. Because there ain't no man in the prime to keep himself no 30 years like that. That's the Holy Ghost do a surgery and take his testosterone out. He can do it. That's going to be a struggle in the flesh. I'd rather the man go and say, man, I can't do this. Let me find my wife. No problem. Go find one wife, boy. You find one, get married. Protect your integrity and your, your spirit. If not, I know how you can keep that man safe. Or that woman. She got divorced. Oh, I don't believe in remarrying. And the same ones who thought, but they ain't no remarrying thing is be shocking up with a little lover in the church. Don't blame me. I know church. That's true. That's true. Oh, ah, right. ah. My denomination say you don't get remarried, child. I'm taking care of my children, my ear, yeah, right? You still hot. You used to get me your things on time. Now, <laughs> the devil is a liar. You used to get me your things on time. And your things regular. Hallelujah. You like your things. You know how you go. You hot. Hallelujah. I'm talking about God said I mustn't remarry. Uh, what am I saying? My point is saying all of this. You have to be found worthy. The kingdom is real. Okay? Don't play around with the kingdom of God. God wants to do great things in your life. Yeah, man. Thank you, Jesus. John 3 and 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water, and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, let me close up this thing. Oh my goodness. We have so much more kingdom teaching to go. Nicodemus. Now here it is. Let me tell you something. From church, I grew up in church from three years old to now. Thank the Lord. I never left church, praise God. Did I make some dumb mistakes? Absolutely. I ain't gonna sit here and say I didn't. Poor mistakes in God. Just, just and every time that happened, that's why I'm smarter now. It's because I didn't obey the Holy Spirit. Come on, wave your hand. You heard the voice. Is that you? You heard the voice. Though. Do not get in that relationship. Do not spend that money. Do not enter that agreement. Do not get into that contract. Do not, don't, 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 don't go to that location. Don't hang with them friends. Don't talk to that man. Don't take that man things. You get caught in the situation. And all along, the Holy Spirit was saying, change. Get out of this thing. He was still trying to catch you out. Amen? Still trying to get you out of that situation. But you, you, you were all too deep. Hallelujah. Come on, say, I was too deep. Say, Lord, forgive me. See, your emotion was already involved. Yes. Your money was already involved. You don't commit that, yeah, I use yes. my friend. Oh, I love you so much, I'll never leave you. Most of his relationship are bad, financial decision, bad life decisions. It's too deep. You couldn't get out. But the kingdom of God is this. Nicodemus was a preacher. Do you know that the preacher, some preachers don't know about the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. 
instead of many of them humbling themselves and saying, Dr. Colley, Pastor, Apostle, whatever you want to call me, brother, man, lucky I hear what you're teaching. I don't know nothing about the kingdom of God. Please teach me. When I don't know something, I call someone and ask them, what, what, what is this? No, they don't want that. They don't want to learn the kingdom of God. They, they, they don't want to study this. I spent 20 plus years studying this, and I ain't even touching the surface yet. We wrote out the agenda for this year. We could probably have about 100 topics of the kingdom alone to teach. Yes. I'm trying to figure out how in the world we got we to take these to the nation. We, we, I was talking about how we're going to get it all out. It's so much. Hallelujah. It's hundreds of hours worth of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. My wife and I, we have a session. I said, babe, what are you sharing? And she went, I can teach this. I said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. I declare, no, 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 no. We ain't called to teach that. We kingdom people. Please start teaching on the kingdom, yeah? And if she didn't change, I was going to take her assignment away. Come on. We kingdom, we ain't got time to teach all them other things. When she came, I was shocked. I said, no, no, babes. Uh -uh. Yeah, you, you fix that, yeah? I don't have time to teach on love unless it's love from the kingdom perspective. So Nicodemus, verse 1 of John 3, there was a man of the Pharisees called Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He was a high priest, a bishop, big time bishop. Many of these big time bishops don't know what Christ thinks about the kingdom of God and its operation. Amen. But let me tell you something about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God brings power by revelation is what you know about the kingdom of yes. God that yes. produces power in your life. Amen. Amen. Now that's very tricky because the contemporary, the thinking of Christianity today is if I have a deep enough revelation or relationship with God, it means I have a certain amount of wealth, I have a certain family life, I have a certain preaching ability. But guess what? None of that means you have revelation in the kingdom and power and a position in God's kingdom. Do you realize that? Yeah. It's how much you know in the kingdom of God. It means I may be going through a season in my life where my finances might not be where they need to be, but I have a deep, I spent hours learning, studying the King Jesus, his kingdom and his operation and how it operates in my life and in the world. And I begin to tell the world about it. I am more empowered. I am deeper with God and his purposes in the earth than the man who has a billion dollars. Amen. I might have one shirt and one. This is dangerous right here. Those who are listening from Africa, I see you on. See, you know why? Because when you go to certain countries, they mightn't have the five bedroom, three bad house you have. That's true. Doesn't mean they don't have a revelation of God's kingdom. So if you go preaching there, God can bless you with a house and a car that might not fit in that country. If you go talking about, oh, I have a closet full of 50 suits. That might not fit in that place. You would discourage the people because they might never attain to that. But what every human being can attain to is a revelation and a place and a role in advancing the kingdom of God wherever they are. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So a man who is 70 could say, whoa, wait a minute now. A person in a wheelchair can say, wait a minute now. I can, wait, wait, whoa. I don't need a pulpit. I can take the kingdom of God by studying it. And God can touch me with his Holy Spirit and reach the world for him. Amen. 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 That a Jewish girl or a little girl in an Islamic country could rise up and be great. That's true. Now they could call me black, nigger, negro. Boy, whatever you want to call me because of the color of my skin. But what I know in the realm of my mind, 
by way of understanding the spirit of God and his word in the kingdom, you can call me Negro all you want. You can't stop me anywhere in the world. Amen. Because the kingdom of God surpasses every nation. Come on, stand to your feet. Play that music. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God surpasses every barrier. That you don't have to be a millionaire, but the kingdom is greater than that. It's because what I know. Yes. Whatever country I've been born in, I cannot be restricted. And I may be born in a, on an island that was 7 miles by 21 miles long. But I can take the kingdom to the largest nations in the world. Peace of what I know in the realm of the spirit from the kingdom of God. Oh, y'all should be excited right now. And I might have messed up in my past, but guess what, honey? Sweet boy, sweet girl. I, all it takes is me just repenting and getting rid of that mess and, and saying, God, I release that sin right today. And tomorrow I can dive into this word and by the Holy Spirit unlocking the revelation of the kingdom, by next week, God could take me from this place to any country in the world to tell the world about his lordship, his rulership, his dominion, his power, and his soon coming kingdom. Hallelujah through the blood of Jesus. Why many folk can't deal with me? So I don't got to kiss up the note, but I know who I am in God. Look at your neighbor and say, I know who I am in God. I ain't competing with no pastor in the earth, no minister, no preacher. No. I know who I am. Look at someone else and say, I know my role in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the people, the same came to Jesus by night. He had the creep and said, man, uh, I don't know this kingdom. Let me go and talk to this Jesus. I see him moving. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't have no big church. He didn't have no fancy car, no expensive robe. But he saw a young Jewish boy walking and in the earth, healing the sick, casting out devils, and preaching a message of the kingdom that was shaking up the people at that time. They were being shaked up. They were coming out of depression. They're coming out of despair. They're coming out of hopelessness. They were coming from being prostitutes, uh, the preachers from being hookers. Uh, hallelujah to holy. They were coming from being criminals uh, and violent and out of the relationship with God and now coming into a supernatural encounter where they were being awakened. They were following this Jesus who was transforming people from a dead religion to a living way. So this high-ranking bishop, not to be seen by other men, came quietly in the night when no one could see him, disguised. He said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God. Look at your name and say, the people know who you are. Mm -hmm. Don't let the, the devil know and the people know exactly what power you're moving in. They ain't going to come you. Maybe you know how many people text me and call me in private. They will never say anything to me publicly. But quietly they call and, and, and want to talk and want to share. Or when I get with them privately in their homes around, they pretend like we talk all the air. Publicly, they're ashamed to identify. It's the same thing with Jesus, man. I like my master. You all want everyone to love you. No, no. Some people ain't gonna identify with me because when I preach, what I teach, and how I walk, how I live, they don't want to identify with that publicly. Amen. And privately, they want to come and ask me questions. Rabbi, we know that our come, our teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. I've seen people who like cast demons out, pastors, ministers, leaders. They have events. They ain't invite me. They invite all kinds of other people. You know why? They know the miracles we see is from God. You get, yeah. I ain't care what they say. You real. Don't tell me all the Jews didn't know Jesus was Lord. This was a rabbi, a leader came and said, you from God. You anointed, you holy. You pure, we know you from God. The miracles you do, we ain't stupid. We know it has to be a supernatural thing. But tell you what, Jesus answered and said, and verily I said unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I'm here to say today, 
Verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, I can paraphrase it. Verily, that I send to you, except a man be born of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. This is a spiritual birth. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said, You are a teacher of Israel, and you don't know these simple things? Praise the Lord. He closed on that. You deep and you preach all over the world and you don't know these things? Amen. You're a pastor of God's people and you don't know these things? That a person is born into the kingdom of God through the Holy Spirit by accepting who Jesus is? So as we recap, number one, Jesus' ministry is the ministry of what? The kingdom of God. He said in his own words, for this reason was I sent to preach the gospel to the kingdom. He said in his own word, unless this gospel of the kingdom be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations, then I come in. So I take it that if he don't do it, he ain't coming right away. Who's holding him up? Look around the room. I can blame you. As you look around the room, who is holding Jesus from coming up? Coming back. You and I and you listening and watching. Why? You ain't taking the kingdom. You're waiting on every prophecy. You go from church to church getting prophecy, just waiting to get a prophetic word. You holding up Jesus from coming. At least as an individual, there's some churches that don't teach the people nothing about kingdom. Whoa, they're keeping the, the church back from seeing Jesus. Unless you're born by the Spirit. I must accept Jesus as Lord and on the inside of my spirit, I must be born anew. How many of you are born again? I'm speaking to a dying world. You must tell a dying world, Jesus is King and Lord. He has a kingdom. And if you want to enter into that kingdom, you must be born again. It's not going back into your mother's womb and coming back out. You must be born by the Spirit. How do you born us? By the Spirit. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He that coming unto me, Jesus said, I will in no way cast you away from me. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. And he shall seal you with the Holy Spirit. If you say, Lord, come into my life. That's the first step of even seeing the kingdom. The Words seeing the kingdom mean experiencing the kingdom. Don't try to tell people about kingdom living who don't want to be saved. The next step is you and I. You must be baptized with the water and baptized with the spirit. Means if you and I and people of God around the world don't get baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, go to the upper room and wait on the Spirit to come upon you. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Then you can go to the world. If you're not baptized with the Holy Spirit, don't go to the world. Get baptized with the Holy Spirit with evidence of praying in tongues. Pastor, do you need tongues to go out? I won't say that, but it's very important that you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of praying in tongues that give you fire. It's important for you to be baptized by water in the name of Jesus. If you've been made baptized with water, you need to go under the water. If you've been baptized by the Holy Ghost and with fire, you need a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and with fire. We go to churches and we're so surprised. That's why the people of God in these pews... They are caught in church and not in the kingdom. They haven't been baptized. So many of them haven't been baptized with water or the Holy Spirit or with fire. That's why they sit down cold as ice every Sunday. Can't pray more than 10 minutes without getting tired. Can't do all night prayer. Can't pray in tongues for more than two minutes. Bro, 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 bro. Two tongue, two word tongue. Come on, you can't be able to see him. Shut that, shut that, shut that, shut that for 50 years. No, the Holy Ghost got a whole alphabet of tongues. Man, your tongues got to grow. Can't be the same two words. You need a fresh baptism in the Holy Ghost and in your tongue. Go deeper. Come on, sir. Look at someone say, go deeper. Your tongues got to go deeper. Yes. 
Come on, get and, and get, 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 get. This is only for you. This is for people listening and watching. So don't take it personal, please. I am speaking to a different set of audience. But if that relates to you, praise God. Take it in love and humility. Growth. Shato Rini Sutu And for God's sake, don't let this 2020, because I can ask you at the end of the year, should the Lord tarry. I will ask you how many people you led to the Lord from this ministry. You cannot be in this ministry. Eating up all this word. And all these fasting and prayers. All these teachings that I know in heard all over the place. I know it. Some places are doing it. And the time you leave here and you can't give me one report of one person you led to a commitment in Jesus Christ and they in here today. Pastor must do everything. Eh? Mm. You're responsible for this kingdom today. Yes. No soul you could say you laid hands on get them healed. No family member you could even say God save unto you. My stepfather, I led him to the Lord. My brother's father was my stepfather too. On his deathbed, I rededicated him to the Lord. My grandfather, I led to the Lord Jesus Christ. My grandmother, I led to rededication to the Lord before she went to the Lord. My brother, I led to the Lord. My cousins, I led to the Lord Jesus Christ. Some other people I can say to later. Very close, I led to the Lord. Brothers, sister, family, cousins. When I preach, the world is easy. In this city, schools, college campuses, hospital ministry, one on one, in the food store, in the gas station. Come on, glory to God. And I'm not bragging, but I'm saying, come on, saints of God. Amen. Should be more than one or two, three, five, six of us doing it. More than ten people on the corner having a tent meeting. You, where are you, man? Amen. But evangelizing is not a popular ministry. Everyone wants pulpit ministry. Because evangelism, you out there, and no one knows. Ain't no money. Ain't no cameras. Ain't no power. Ain't no recognition. It's just straight people pulling out of the kingdom of hell to the kingdom of God. And then bringing them to the house of God. Amen. And you might not even get recognized for that. Uh, but people want to be prophets. So people say, yeah, prophecy come true. The prophets, prophets are the lowest. And the, if they were to be, the Bible said, every one of us must do the work of an evangelist. That's the greatest work. Yes. Prophecies will cease. Tongues are going to cease. Praise and worship is going to cease. Yes. Preaching is going to cease. And only those who were in the kingdom of Jesus Christ will last. Amen. Gifts are going to cease. Oh, no, 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 no. oh God, we're so behind. Lord, I repent today. For my life, let's pray. And everyone here, I know me for first, Lord. I, I've gotten distracted. And I'm going to say it every week. If you put it in my heart until I make it right. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We get busy with the affairs of this life. Yes. Amen. What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to put on? Isn't life more than these things? Yeah. Don't you know your heavenly father knows you have need of these things? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. Seek the kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So much time on the internet just searching. So many meetings trying to come up with the next best money-making project. Eva Gandelenebos. So much time on television and radio and movies. They're good to enjoy yourself. But oh God, let it be in perspective of the kingdom of God. Yes. Worrying about money and clothes and 
what's going to be my next plan, worrying about what tomorrow holds, worrying about this and thinking about that and asking God for this and all these million lists of things we ask God for and they're good in a sense but my God he is sitting on his throne and saying where can I get you to do something to expand my presence my dominion my blood my power my love in the earth are you going to be his hands and his feet you will never be hands I live for my hands. And that's you this morning. Amen. You know what that means? Get rid of sin right away. Don't You ain't got to fast about it. Amen. Pastor, is it right to drink? If you're in the kingdom, I have no discussion about drinking. Is it all right to smoke? I have no discussion about smoking. When you get in the kingdom, these stupid questions people ask you because they want to halfway serve God. Huh? They don't want to come all the way in the kingdom, so they got to ah, the Bible says you can have a little wine for your stomach. Well, that's you. I am so focused on the kingdom, I don't have time to be intoxicated, to talk something and bring a curse on my life. Because most people in the Bible who got drunk did some of the dumbest, stupidest things. Either they slept with people they're not supposed to, or decreed stuff they're not supposed to, and paid a great price. So if you want to drink, go ahead and drink. I don't have no discussion on drinking. I don't drink because I want the kingdom in my life. Is it all right to have this friend? I, you decide on that. I got time for the kingdom. I have no friends who ain't pushing me into my kingdom purpose. That ends that. Should I hang with this family? If they cussing and care, you want to stay with them, stay with them. Anyone who ain't pushing me, it could be my mom, my pa, my cousin, my sister, my friend. Anybody who don't push me in the kingdom. Anyone who I don't, I can't pray the kingdom of God with. No, anybody who I can't talk about these dreams I have to fulfill in the kingdom. And they support it. And they pray with me. And they encourage me. And I don't have time. So you discuss if you want to be friends or whoever. I don't have that time for it. So Lord, we repent. For wasted time. Come on, pray. It's you, all of us. You listening or watching. Lord, I wasted your time. But today it ends in the name of Jesus. Lord, I get rid of every sin that keeps holding me in bondage. Come on, pray. You know what it is. Everyone have their own sin. Let's just get rid of it. Don't discuss it. Get rid of it or you will perish with it. Lord, I get rid of every sin that keeps me away from serving you and carrying out your kingdom mandate. God is looking for people in these last days who are going to be used by the kingdom. God ain't looking for some superstar. He's looking for some kingdom persons. He's looking for some kingdom sons, some sons and daughters who are going to carry out what the master wants, just like the master wants it, just like the master did it when he was in the earth. Are you going to be his hands and his feet? Are you going to be his voice? Lift up your hands. Father, right now, those people who are listening and watching, they're ready to be used for you. Lift up your hands. I'm going to release an anointing. Come on, pray in the language, pray in tongues. Let your tongues roll. The Lord, if you could just get a handful of us, you could shake up the world. You did it with 12 apostles, so you can do it with us. Right now, by the power invested in me in the spirit of the living God, even as we have our hands outstretched to the Lord. I say, Lord, baptize your people with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And I declare right now by the power of the resurrected Lord that every hand that is lifted and every voice that is listening and every ear that is listening as you receive, receive the power of the kingdom of God. Not only to encourage you, but the power of the kingdom to make you preach, teach, and demonstrate the goodness of the kingdom in every nation, every city, every village. Come on, lift up your hands up. This one is for the high level people. This is for the people who want to do great and mighty things. This is for the people who want to go above and beyond just the meagerly Christianity and the 
your regular churchiness. Uh, this is for kingdom level people. This is for kingdom minded people. This is for kingdom apostolic people. Uh, hallelujah. Apostolically, I send you to do the work of the kingdom. And I say, cast out the devil, heal the sick, uh, raise the dead, uh, teach and preach the kingdom of God. Wherever you go, starting from today, is that you shout hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord as you pray. Hallelujah. If that's you, come on, give the Lord praise. Uh, clap your hand, don't stop. Come on, tell the Lord. I want some of you to begin to commit to the Lord some things uh, you want to do. Lord, use me for your kingdom glory. Lord, use me for your kingdom purpose. Uh, Lord, I don't want to just be a regular Christian. I want to make a mark. Come on, uh, lift up your hands. Uh, Lord, I want to tell the Lord, I want to make global impact. Uh, I want to make supernatural impact in the kingdom of God. Lord, by your grace, uh, use me, Lord, uh, to make impact in the nations uh, and in the territories, in my region, uh, in my family, in my nation, in my city, in my town, in my village, uh, and let it extend around the world. Use me uh, for your glory, Lord. I'm, I'm tired of being selfish with my gospel. I'm tired of being, break the self, come on, ask the Lord to break it. Uh, break the selfishness out of my life. Uh, the self-centered gospel. Uh, bless me, bless me, bless me. I break that out of my life. Uh, I break the pride. I break the laziness. Uh, I break the deception. Always wanting a handout uh, from the kingdom. Want the sucker. Uh, hallelujah. Prophets and pastors that don't want to uh, to pour back out uh, into the people of God. I break uh, this spirit of familiar spirit that's sweeping the church. Uh, that people just want a prophetic word and a dream interpretation. Uh, but after that, you get that. You got to rise up uh, and be great and do something for the Lord with your life. Uh, do something with the Lord with your life. Do something for the Lord with your Anointing. Do something for the Lord. Only what you do for Christ will last. So we go forward today, Lord, prepared to do more than something to impact you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you continue to pray, God bless you and keep you kingdom people. Look at someone and say, I'm a kingdom person. Look at someone and say, I'm a kingdom ambassador. Look at someone and say, I'm a son of God, a daughter of God. Today, I've been born in the spirit. I've been birthed in the kingdom anew. Get ready, world. You've never seen anyone like me yet. Oh! I want you to say that like you mean it. Say, world, get ready. You have never seen anybody like this yet. Because I got a revelation. Of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Uncommon, miracles. Uncommon miracles. You have never seen before. Never seen. Are coming out of my life. Supernatural words from God. Supernatural words from God. Are coming out of my mouth. Revelation like never before. Revelation like never Get before. ready, world. Get ready, world. You're gonna hear me preach. You're gonna hear me teach. You're gonna see me demonstrate it. By the glory of God. Get ready, Lord's family. You're going to be saved from my ministry. That's it. That's it. Get ready, city. Get ready, pastors. You're going to hear my preaching. You're going to hear my message. And ain't nothing you can do about it. But accept it. Or miss your opportunity. Get ready, country. Get ready, government. Get ready, systems. To hear the kingdom from my perspective. By the Spirit of God. I'm unstoppable. In the Holy Ghost right now. Oh my God. Clap your hands if you believe what you said. I say clap your hands if you believe what you said. Come on, rejoice. Come on, rejoice. Come on, rejoice. Man, I want you to shout, man. Let the camera, let the world hear. Hallelujah. So those who are listening and watching can agree that what God wants to do in their life is going to be great. Oh, Carrie, get ready to pray some prayers for the kingdom of God this world has never heard. 
Prophet Shaliba get ready to prophesy the opening of some nations that were locked down, and they're gonna open up for the gospel. Get ready to pray and to prophesy and to see it happen. Turkey, get ready. You two women of God, hold hands there. You two women of God, begin to hold hands. Get ready, women of God. I want you to shake each other. Because he said something's shaking off. You ain't got time, girl. You ain't got time, ladies. You ain't got time. Even as you shake God's hand, I'm sanctifying you all afresh. When I sanctify you today, don't let nobody cause you to lose your sanctification. Don't let anybody to make you unpure. Because the kingdom of God needs you now more than ever before. Souls are depending on you to come forth. Jesus. You don't have one week, you don't have one month, you don't have one year. Yes. It's now. Say now. Now. The kingdom of God is now. Now. The kingdom of God is right now. Right now. It ain't tomorrow. The kingdom is now. Shoot, Step forward into the kingdom. Walk into the kingdom. Walk into the kingdom. Step forward into the kingdom. The kingdom is now. The kingdom is not coming. The kingdom is now. What you got to do is now. What you're going to be is now. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's only spiritual kingdom. Hey, mama, mama, mama. Hear ye the word of the Lord today. That said the Lord God of hosts, I'm about to do a very unusual thing. Huh? For I'm going to cause a new opportunity to come forth. Huh? In what was meant to be a bad experience in the country. I'm going to be Shaya. I'm going to use it for somebody. Huh? Whoever has this clearing, clarion call in the spirit. Huh? To arise to bring forth the kingdom. Answer and solution to it. Huh? For the end of the day, and not go see her. Should a Monday, can it a man do the see her? Oh, God, God is touching her. You right now, shut a Monday, and you'll see her. Hallelujah, because you have the realm of the spirit. Some of you, the enemy had a death sentence for 2020. I hear the Lord say, because you came today and heard this revelation, I am canceling the spirit of death. And cancer is drying up in your body. Hearts are being healed. Kidneys are being touched by the angels of the Lord right now. Hallelujah. In the abdomen, the Lord said, I'm touching even the abdomen. I'm dissolving that thing that was meant to kill you because God said, I'm giving you an extension on your life because you are now prepared to do the work of the kingdom. I'm dissolving the curse. I'm dissolving the witchcraft that was sent against you. The Lord said, I am personally stepping in and destroying the witchcraft of your life because death cannot touch you because you have a kingdom assignment to fulfill. Thank you. In a crash, huh? that crash what was designed to kill you. Huh? The Lord said, I sped you for such a time as this. Huh? For know ye not that you call into the kingdom for such a time as this. See, ma? Shut up. The video, Sire and Amanda, come on. Holy Ghost. Huh? I feel this prophetic anointing coming upon me. Huh? Shut up. See, ye. Huh? For yea, said the Lord God of hosts, some ministries huh? that refuse to teach the kingdom of God huh? and come into the apostolic ministry. Huh? God said, I'm going to close them down. Shut up because they are of the old way. And yea, I will cause a great awakening in the minds and the hearts of my people. For the Lord said, didn't I say in the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. The Lord said, I'm pouring my spirit upon everyone. And the people are going to become agitated and say, wait, where is this kingdom message? Why are you not teaching this? Why are you not teaching about deliverance and the supernatural? Why are you not moving in the prophetic? Why are you not moving in the signs and wonders of the Lord, uh, and they're going to begin to move. Uh, hear ye the word of the Lord from those sanctuaries. Uh, these big edifices, they're going to move uh, and they're going to go to grassroots places uh, where the power of God is being demonstrated. Uh, and they're going to move. Uh, and some of those places are going to go into panic 
Uh, because there's going to be mass splitting, not because of man or because of some error, but because God is going to begin to take his people out of these churchiness, uh, out of these places where they've been locked in bondage for years, hoping that things would change, uh, where the word was not coming up in the anointing. Uh, God said, I'm going to move my people. They're getting uneasy, uh, especially after all they've gone through. They're looking for a sure word, uh, and they have not been getting a sure word. Uh, they're being preached at, and they're not being empowered. God said, I'm going to shake my people uh, from the young and the old. Uh, they're getting tired and weary. They want a new and a fresh move. Uh, they want a kingdom experience. They want something different uh, that will compete with the world's uh, uh, tactic against them. God said, I'm shaking them. Uh, get ready to see a mass shifting uh, out of churches, out of places, said the Lord. Uh, and yea, said the Lord, even in this country, uh, the revival is taking place. A mighty move is about to hit uh, over the next three months. Uh, and the saints are going to demonstrate in the streets. Uh, there's going to be a demonstration of the true saints of God. And it will be heard from place to place, island to island. Uh, people will hear and know it is a mighty move of God. And it's not going to come uh, from the traditional places or denomination. It's going to be an uprising uh, of the spirit of God upon the young uh, and they're going to awaken uh, and they're going to arise into truth uh, and they're going to challenge uh, the known doctrines of the time uh, and they're going to come into kingdom power uh, and there's going to be reports of supernatural miracles taking place uh, in the schools and in the colleges uh, and on the campuses uh, all throughout and the Lord will validate it and show forth that it is indeed his sign and his wonder Yea, said the Lord, God of hosts. Uh, hallelujah. I see a park revive uh, with a whole crusade. Uh, hallelujah. There's going to be a major crusade uh, like never before that's going to break the chains uh, of darkness. Uh, and it's not coming uh, as we would expect. It's a supernatural, uncommon move uh, that I will send a crusade. Uh, someone with my heart. And God said, I'm going to break the powers of darkness over this land and I'm going to set the people free said the Lord Amen. Hallelujah. but get ready I see a great persecution coming against the church and there's some laws that are going to be passed that are going to shake churchiness get ready those who are not kingdom are going to be affected really badly because there's some laws that are going to be tabled that are going to change the way church is done. And only those who are in kingdom who can, who can move and who don't need a building and who don't need a location but they carry the kingdom wherever they go will be able to stand. And there's going to be a great mourning as the church this nation is going to feel a significant pinch. And they're going to be surprised that a government would do it that way. Shall most go to the manda? Hear ye the word of the Lord. Shall they be a turning, turning, turning? I see a turning of the backs against the people. You better pray. If you're in kingdom, many will be disappointed. Many are already disappointed. For they feel abandoned, forsaken, and rejected. And they're not being heard. And they will not be heard. Yeah, for ye, I see a turning of the back towards the people. But ye said the Lord, isn't this that you asked for? You didn't seek me, you sought the solution that man would deliver you. So man has now failed you and will continue to fail you until you seek me and I will provide. For man will put the tension on you. Get ready for a tightening again. Some things are going to come that are going to be tight on the people. Hey, Baba. The tightening I see uh, like a valve being turned. Every time it's turned, it's squeezing the pressure. And if you don't pray, the pressure is going to be tight on some people. But the true saints are going to make it out. Huh? The true saints, the tightening is going to squeeze the power of God. The tightening is going to cause you to pray more. The true saints, the tightening is going to cause you to seek the Lord. And the Lord is going to send external help from around the world to bless you even more. Here in 
is the word of the Lord. You better stop now. Let's come. Hallelujah. Bring your offering and your gift. Come on, give the Lord praise and thanks. Hallelujah. Bring your offering and your gift. If you've been blessed by this ministry, thank you again for joining us here at Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. This is at Dr. Kilafa Calling Ministries. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Please share this. Tune into us again Thursday nights and Sundays. Hallelujah. Reach out to us and tell others about this word. We are not just a regular people. We are a kingdom people. So Shalewa and I sends greetings to you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have your offering, uh, you want to bless this ministry. This ministry is sowing into nations for the kingdom to be blessed. Hallelujah. Nations are being impacted right from this location. So when you sow your seed, your seed is not going into hallelujah. Just uh, any old work is going into global ministry. <clears throat> All throughout Asia and Africa, North and South America, the Caribbean, Europe, your seed is impacting lives. It's going on our television and radio ministries that are impacting millions around the world. Would you kindly join us? Would you partner with us? Would you sow into us? If you were PayPal, look for which one? Kingdom Apostolic Ministries on PayPal. Hallelujah. If you want cash up, reach out to us. We'll tell you which one to tell us. Uh, we're Cami on cash app. Hallelujah. If you want to do a direct deposit, go to our website and find the information. Contact us. We'll be happy to, uh, hallelujah, receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Stretch your hand toward this offering. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the seed. Bless and sanctify it. May it do the work of your kingdom work. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless and increase it. On everyone who gave, everyone who's praying for this ministry, I pray, I pray a special blessing on every partner of this ministry. Every partner, every prayer warrior, every intercessor, every pastor, every leader, every saint, every one of you that love this house, that love this work, that believe in the vision of this house, what God has called us to do. I pray a special blessing on you and your family and your loved ones and your home. I pray a special covering of the blood of Jesus over your life. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to tell you, don't worry about coronavirus. If you keep anointing yourself with the oil, he will keep you from corona, Bax, Heineken, or whatever type of virus out there. Amen. That's for the drinking people that understand that. Bless it now in Jesus' name. Amen. About us here. Shut up, go see. Ooh, God. I see huh? the leaders of the Caribbean scrambling for a solution. Huh? For yay, the corona will huh? touch the region. Huh? A few places huh? within the region. Huh? And it shall be so. Huh? And unless the saints pray, it will spread more. Huh? But yea, the Lord, if you pray, huh? I will continue it more than man shut up under the DOC but as a sign it will come shut up under the DOC and they will not be able to hide it in Jesus name we pray amen just close out the people of God in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah father we just give you thanks we just give you praise we just give you glory what a wonderful message and ministry that went forth today from this place. Let us stretch our hands towards Apostle. Father, we thank you for Apostle Carl. We thank you for his life, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have poured into him and all that he has poured out upon your people. Now, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that you continue to bless him. We pray that you pour back all of the virtue that he has poured out upon your people. Lord God, let Phyllis come, Lord God, and let it continue to overflow, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We cover him now with your blood from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And we bind backlash, backlash, attack, and retaliation right now. And declare that the kingdom of God is now and it has come in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Now may the Lord bless you all. May the Lord keep you all. We thank you all so much for watching from all around the world, wherever you are joining us from. We see Africa, we see Asia, we see the Caribbean, we see right here in the Bahamas. We see you in your homes. God bless you all. We love you. 
thank you for tuning in to Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. Let us know that we are continuing to be a blessing unto you. God bless you today. Until we meet again, recover us all in the blood of Jesus. Go forward in power and with understanding of the kingdom and do damage in the kingdom of darkness with this message that you have received. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen.